recordings. Okay. Um, so we start with sorting, collecting, the records, and different audits. Um, one thing that you can do once you're a technique, particularly in the exam situation, when because we, we'll give you a question in the exam, it's like, here's a scenario, and more more in depth than what we can just give. Here's a scenario, like a paragraph. And what design pattern can you use to model the scenario? And you need to show, you know, we, like you know, last time we talked about strategy pattern and observer pattern and technique, like characteristics, these are attributes or elements of them. Um, and so what you need to, you need to do in response is say, okay, well, here's how the sort of scenario or domain relates to those characteristics. So for strategies, like what are the different strategies? How do you change the things that for uh, observer? It's like, you know, what's the observer, what's the subject? How do you really catch the impact in the pool? Um, the state, what the state and actually you know, you can do the key kind of pattern of going to some key words and key ideas associated with it. Um, the one we say, okay, here's a scenario, you need to match the scenario to the pattern. Um, which it will as can more accurately be map the pattern to a scenario because the scenario is like a problem, and then your pattern is the tool you use to solve the problem. So for this third one, um what would it be? One of these five. Um let's start with this other few uh, okay, strategy. Um, any key words that we can pick out saying you made this strategy pattern? Uh, the one that it's like, uh, it's looking by a collection of objects from like our, it's going to be done in different orders. Yeah, so different orders sticks out as being different strategies, and you can chop and change between strategies. And then um, sorting is, you know how we talked about the idea that the strategy pattern is you implement some sort of algorithm or series of steps, right? Like sorting, obviously, is you know, sorting algorithms from two, five, two, one. Um, and so we say, well, maybe we'll sort it by name, we'll sort it by age, we'll sort it by color, whatever. And you can change dynamically. So yeah, um, any, any, content, any contestants think it's not strategy, it could be something else? No, cool. What about this one, modeling a file system? Uh, we'll hear from table up the top left back. States are the file like globally accessible, um, globally readable, globally executable, taking the new word author. Um, and then your transition to just like your what is it called? C H mod, um, you know, when you change the transition to a file. I, I think that the this is a this is a we give you a much more descriptive um thing to say for the design pattern for in an exam, but yeah. I, I think when you're sort of modeling files and file commissions, you could use some form of a state pattern. One of the, one of the interesting things about like the state pattern is that you have to have these kind of really finitely described, like here's one state, here's another state, here's a third state, and here are the transitions like this. Um, whereas when you have commissions, it's almost like a table, right? Where it's like, here's my commissions table, and you know, this is tick, 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 and this is the process. You know, these people don't have these people do, and it's, it's more, um, I guess it's more linear in the sense that you can just add rows to the table, and the transitions aren't particularly complex, right? It's just like a chain and you can do command. Whereas your state pattern is more like here's this, you know, we go from um, one one of you saw like one that I heard was like the you know, the open um open part where it's like you can tap on or tap off, or you're currently changing things between there's some things where it's like you can. It's like five minute buffer between like two places so that you're looking at like two saves. So I don't know how it works, but that's that's sort of like a good example of state pattern. Um any other patterns that this could be because this is quite quite broad. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, follow up. So you have like your file system, you use like the root folder slash, and then you have your own slash desktop or whatever. And then within any folder, right, you can have what? What do we do? Another folder or five, right? And so you have to say you've got another folder for two by one one, and then you've got a file and you call it my um, we'll talk about the concept pattern in a second. Does anyone know what these types of nodes are called? Impacted yeah. trees. Lead nodes? Yeah. And what about the other one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Grant or this is correct. Is it step name? The file. Not really. We could be doing that. Okay. Parent, yeah, or um, South of the city. No, that was shot. <laughs> I guess it's like, I mean, I, I wouldn't compete too much with like three semantics. Um, so you have your leap nodes and you have compound nodes, which are a series of you know, that contain the other. Yeah, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, you uh, and they have branches, so yeah. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think it was that um, <laughs> cool. So, that's we'll, we'll talk about comps to pattern um, in the next exercise. All right, this one updating a UI component when the state of the program changes. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another great example of the concept pattern. It's like, um, the only thing that react. Like you have like components, and then you have nesting of components within components. Like you get the same structure, right? We get um, your your compound version of it. Um, what I would focus on is the very elegant skills in the other. You can go get this one. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, anyone else <laughs> want to take a crack at this one? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stretch you. We were saying that you could not possibly. Yeah, this was a good place to get that. I don't guess it does. Is we have to do a change? Yeah, it's reacting. I like, I like that. Um, when, like, we, we talked about this last week, right? When you do the game, right? You know, you do your, your game or whatever it is, and then when an event happens or a change in state, right? Someone goes, you know, their hand is down, um, it triggers an event, and then we have to propagate. State between different entities or services or the game people right like on the people and so on reacts. Um so yeah it's not a safe pattern um, because like the states aren't clearly defined right we don't have this sort of here's state one two three and transitions um instead we have here's this component right and I actually we think a lot like where I was talking about react before is um, re the, the word react is like um, it's just all just the pattern. Then someone clicks the button, and that sort of contributes the event. So we can all just combine that. Um, but in this case, like here's your button, and someone creates the button. And uh, let's say that like this is just a bit of form, right? You have your form here, and then what your front end will do is talk to the back end and say, "Okay, here's the form submission." The back end will do some stuff, and then maybe the result is like now that the you know, down here. It shows what you just typed in the form, right? Really, really simple, dumb app. Um, trying to think of a better, better example. Or oh, actually, a better example is like your your assignment one, where it's like you say create a new satellite in the computer, and then you say I'm going to create a new satellite here, and then the front end goes to the back end. Okay, here's the state change, right? And it's like uh, whatever it is, satellite create. And then your back end does this thing, you say new satellite, blah, 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 and like in the Java programs. And then 
um, it sends back to the front end, here's all the satellites. This is the closest implication of how it actually works. But um, what you essentially get is the propagation of state. So when um, the state of the program changes, the UI gets updated and you can now see the satellite. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, what about the next one? Passing and evaluating the risk of expressions. The reference strategy is hard, yes. You know, you have to get different. I don't have any questions. You can work as a share. I'd like to think, but it, I, I would challenge it in this way where it's like, here's an addition expression. We want like a way to evaluate that. Is there more than one way you can evaluate an addition expression? Okay, like the way, like how you can add another layer. Yeah. Right? Which means it's very hard. You can't really chop and change strategy. I guess you could argue the same thing. Like, 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 uh, yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. But it's a complicated tool. I think it's Yeah, who's arguing complicated? Um, like, 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 for example, let's say that you have a not just cost to get cost minus application, you know, mm -hmm. it's very much like you have to have this case with your. Yeah, you need to do that. Like, they take care of the lower and you need to have a lower level. Like, 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 yeah, um, he was literally the next step, but you know, build up an expression of three and then you can pop the pattern to where it's going to be. All right, very last, but not really, um, but just in the brightest screen, we can really see the observer. Any contestants there? No, how come? Instead of like the screen, I like, think the control of the screen finance is sort of observing the state of the light sensor when you know, to make a decision. Yep, so what's the pain in state? Like, whatever the light sensor is doing, however it works, I guess like, the screen finance would, would be observed when I'm going to Any other queries or comments on any of these scenarios? So this is good, just being able to look at it and go, oh, I think it's observer, I think it's strategy, or I think it's that. Um, now, one thing, one thing that kind of gets to do is, is sort of think about how you can apply design patterns, but um, who reckons that you should always use, like if you get given a piece of code, you think, oh, I need a design pattern in this. Does anyone like you know, design patterns or a must? Disagree, who else disagrees? Sorry, <laughs> it's like you know, put on a band aid, it will feel better about it. Um, so Nathan, yeah, I <laughs> the point of design is to get you to be like, oh, now I understand how I'm going to be exposed to three micros. That would work. No. Yeah. 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 Go back to the, the comments debate we had in week two. Um, <laughs> sorry, they say Java is the best documented language. Yeah. Yes, but is Java code the best documented? Yeah. There is. I 
I think that's that's all true, but what if your code, what, what if that's not the case? What if people are always going to have to deal with it? What if you, you know, you write your code and then then you release it into production and now you have to deal with it breaking or you have to maintain it or the customer goes, oh, can you add this thing? Really, really want to do that? Yeah, so one one of the things I think this this speaks to is is um design patterns are tools in your toolkit. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you got your hammer, your screwdriver, your, your spanner, or whatever it is. Um, and you use the right tool to do the right job. So if you're like, okay, here's this problem, we don't need to use the strategy panel or the state panel. You could just make a simple file. And that's it. You can use inheritance, right? Like these are design patterns in their own right. It's just you know ways of doing stuff, ways of solving problems that um you know they don't have the word pattern on it, but they are a pattern on behavior when it comes to writing code and design software. So really just say anything to design pattern in that sense. Um but in terms of these ones here, these are just particular solutions to certain types of problems that sometimes you like see echoes of and go, okay, well, maybe we can use a design pattern here, but it's not always the case. Um, and I think the problem that you two are talking about of, you know, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll slap on a design pattern just like a band aid, and that will make our design better, but then maybe it doesn't make the design better. And then, as we said just now, like you have to deal with that, other people have to deal with that. And um, it, it's not like a just sort of clean, clean cut, oh, this is a solution for all your problems. Yeah. I would, I would like on this, yeah, if it, if it needs to be fixed, then it's going to be a problem. Mm. But more like simple code that it can very easily be like something short or something you don't necessarily need to play that with many things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like um, this idea of over-engineering. I didn't think when doing the assignment, and sometimes when I'm like, I mean, I see people, they make this like, well, they do something, they'll make a factory class just for, the satellites and devices. And we'll look at the factory pattern today, hopefully if we have time. Um, and I'm kind of like, oh, you know, you could do that. That's a, it's a like a, a valid, it's a use of the design pattern, but I would argue it's probably over-engineering because you, you don't want to sort of like design for requirements that don't exist yet. And it's really hard to find this balance between like making stuff extensible and using design patterns for that. And then just going, oh, well, this thing could happen at some point in the future, but, it hasn't happened now, so you, why, why are you writing code for it? Um, does that make sense to people? Cool, that's enough rambling. Let's write, let's write some code. Let's do the composite pattern. Um, I'm gonna start by doing the actual, um, we're just gonna start with writing the code and then we'll do some idea stuff later. Um, so we're gonna make a new package called the calculator. And this system takes two expressions and we need to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide. And here's the catch. Like when you add two num well, you can add two numbers, what one and two, but you could also say, well, I'm going to add one, two, or one plus two and three plus four. So I might have something like it looks like it's you know one plus two, um, and then I'm going to multiply that by three minus four divided by five. Um, another way we can represent this is like we were just talking about before, a tree. Sorry, I changed. I'm going to I'm going to walk through some theory and then put in some coding. So at the top, the root node is going to be times, right? Because you have uh, this expression multiplied by this expression, so we get times. And then on the left side is this thing here. So we're going to add one and two. And then on the right, we've got this big division expression. Mm 
And on the left is going to be what type of node? Yeah, composite or compounds, it's going to be minus three and four. And then what's the other type of node called? Yep, leaf node? Five. Bang, that's our tree. So when we evaluate the tree, we're going to say, okay, I'm going to evaluate this and I'm going to multiply this whole thing here. I'm going to multiply this whole thing here by this whole thing here. And the key idea is it doesn't matter what these things are. These could be just like one and two. These could be three and four, this could be whatever. These could be a hundred layers deep in the tree. And we don't care because we're just evaluating the interface. Yeah. Is it a way to the tree? Sorry? Is it a way to the binary tree? Uh, for the purposes of this question, yes. But you could potentially have four. So let's do it. We're going to start. We need, we need one common interface by which everything in the, the tree structure is one of these. We're going to call this uh, expression dot java and we'll uh package calculator oh i'm just confused it's like way so public um interface expression and we'll have one method which is going to be double evaluate um well here we go Okay, let's start with, I'm probably just going to do like two of them because I can't be bothered doing all of them. Oh, I'll move the camera. Is that good? Very sad. The screen's too big. Okay, um, we'll call this add expression dot Java. Uh, and all this is going to do is implement expression which means we have to override the evaluate method. Um, now that I think about this, probably what we should do is add another layer of abstraction. So I'm going to call this um, compound expression dot Java. And we're going to make it, what kind of class do people think? So all of plus minus times divide are going to have, an, have a relationship with this class. Yeah, we'll make it abstract, right? Because the idea of a compound expression doesn't really exist, but it's this, this abstract idea. Um, and what we'll do is say private. Oh, this is, oh, I feel like I do this every time. What could we do? Oh, we'll do it. Okay, private um, expression um, E1 and private expression E2. The problem is we have to access these in the subclass, but we'll just add getters and setters. So what we'll do is go source action, um, generate a constructor, both of those fields, that's done. And same thing again, generate getters and setters. We probably don't need the setters, but we'll keep them. Um, and then this is just going to extend expression, sorry, extends compound expression. And this is going to implement expression. Now, notice when you inherit, sorry, when you implement an interface in an abstract class, you're not forced to implement the full method, um, but we are forced to here. We have the constructor that just calls the super. Um, now, what am I going to say here? Right, I've got two expressions that's inside the super class. What do I want to do with them? I want to add them. Okay, let's try that. So return E1 plus, oh, sorry, get E1 plus get E2. Now this doesn't work obviously because, you know, uh, operator overloading is not a thing in Java. We can't just add two objects. And moreover, what do we actually, we don't want to add to them. We want to add the results to the Yeah, we want, to, we want to say, okay, here's my multiply node. I want to figure out what the left it is. And I want to figure out what the right it is and add them together. Because these at the moment are just un unevaluated. Um, uncomputed expressions. So what would what we change our code to? What method can we invoke on these two objects? I'll give you a hint. It's the only method in the interface. Yeah, so what we're going to do is inside the evaluate method, we're going to evaluate the child nodes. And this is the, like one of the sort of fundamental tenets of the composite pattern is you have this kind of like recursive 
something you can kind of think of it as being almost recursive, but you're not actually recursing through the same time. You're jumping into different objects in the tree. So we'll say e1 dot evaluate plus e2 dot evaluate. Awesome. So what they'll do here is say, okay, go and figure out what this left side is and go and figure out what this right side is. I don't actually care. You can be like just a number, you can be a whole you know, another three of two months away. Doesn't matter. Go value it and then you can do it on the yeah, well, you like if you went more than two, I'd say you'd just have a list and then you know, like do a for each and then loop through. But the, the idea is the same, you just go through the child nodes and, and add them. All right, let's do multiply version dot Java, and I'm going to be lazy, copy. This is why I wanted to um, use the abstract classes because then we're repeating less code. Um, and then all I'm going to do is change this. Um, let's let's try and do the expression we have on the board. Uh, multiply expression must be divided. There we go. Subtract. Nope. Oh. Well. And then we'll just change this to a minus um, and then go divide expression dot Java. Oops. Copy. Paste. And then just hit the divide symbol here. Cool. Are we done? We all finished. That's it. Got all the operations you need. Let's go and do some calculating. We missed anything. Sorry. Yeah, well, we have, like, let's say, okay, we construct this expression, we get a multiply node, we've got an add node and a divide node. So we construct the expression, then we call evaluate and print that. Is that going to work? Just with, with all the classes we currently have. Uh, not yet, but we'll worry about that in a second. Four times. Right, let's see what else. Oh, uh, let's do it. No, it's probably even problem, but not the one. What are the options for everybody in this game? No, it's a good one. It'll just be a double screen. Look at look at all the expressions we have and all the possible nodes in the tree. Like, are we missing anything? Oh, is it, is, is the system going to run Yeah, why? Because shouldn't we have something like here? Get me one of the evaluators and not like something like that. Yeah, what do you call that in your code? Oh, okay. 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 So kind of what what are we we're missing a base case here? What's our base case? We've got our oh, if B2 doesn't exist. B1 oh no. Think about okay, let's, let's say let's let's walk through. Let's actually try, try write a test pass. Um we'll do it uh in calculator test dot java. Oh, and we're gonna go public, static, void, main, string, args. All right, so we're gonna say expression E equals, I'm gonna construct this expression on the board. New, uh, multiply expression. And then we're gonna pass in two arguments. One is going to be our add expression. Um, and then a new multi, sorry, divide expression. And then inside the divide expression is gonna be a, Subtract expression. And now let's say, okay, we'll go one, two, and then divide is going to be 
uh, three minus four and five. This isn't gonna work. Does anyone know why? We've written the constructor to take in two expressions, right? If you go to this abstract class here. So we're passing it in. It's like, what are you doing? Um, so what are we, if I, if I go back to the question, what are we missing now in our system file? We need the child, uh, the leaf nodes or the child nodes, um, whatever you want. To, I, I would be careful about using the term child nodes because like these are the two children. Um, you can think about it as like a relative versus an absolute sort of thing. Um, we'll call this leaf expression or we call this value expression dot Java. Um, and that is going to extend, oh, this is not going to extend compound expression, right? Because it's not compound. Um, so we we'll just say implements expression. Uh, and then we add our implementation. So when we evaluate a value expression, um, you know, this is going to have a private int value and a constructor. What are we going to return when we evaluate? Yeah. We just return the value, right? Because that's all it contains. There's no computation. Um, we'll move this up. So we just return value. And that's it. So now when we go to our test, we can say new value expression one, new value expression two. And last but not least. Cool. Um, multiply expression cannot be resolved to a type. What does that mean? Probably what? Mul oh, multiply, multiply. There we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do system dot out dot print line e dot evaluate right because we can this is all just one big expression let's evaluate it and then what it's going to do is work its way down the trees and call the evaluate and feed block we'll step through it in a second so let's um hit run and it's going to be some ram floating point number there you go i don't know if that's correct someone can do it on the calculator Cool. Um, now I just want to step through this just to really like crystallize it. So we'll chuck in a breakpoint and hit debug. Sorry, not this one. Yeah. Should be negative 0.6. It is negative 0.6. Yeah. Uh, it's you know floating point inaccuracy. Um, okay, so we jump into here. You can see that we start out with the multiply expression, and then what it's going to do is go and do this, and then it's going to go and do this. So let's jump into the first um, evaluation. You can see that we've, oh, we've got to go through the getters. It's a bit of a pain. So we go through the getters, and then we go into the evaluate expression, and that takes us inside the add expression, which, again, got to go through the getter. That takes us to the child, the leaf node. Now we go to E2. In this case, so now we've done one, and now we're up to two. I'll try and expand this so you can see the values. There you go. And then we get to uh, now we're back up at the multiply because this whole thing is done. We've done one plus two, which is three. Yeah, there you go. Evaluate is three. And then we go down into the second half, which takes us to. Um, the divide expression. There's, there's a lot of jumping through getters here, but I, I hope you can appreciate where, again, going sort of layer by layer down the tree. Um, and then that will go down into each individual value, three and four. And then eventually there's four. 
now we get to uh, the divide expression. Oh, sorry, I think I skipped through a bunch of stuff, but we got to, we got to five, and now we're sort of working our way back up the tree, and that's it. Oops. <laughs> now we go into some Java. Um, any questions? We've got ten minutes left. Uh, any other questions about the composite pattern? We've got ten minutes left. Uh, let's talk about creational patterns. Um, there's some stuff up to do with a game here. That's not super important. What we just want to do is use, we're going to change the way, I don't know if we're refactoring anything or we are. Yes, yeah, so we've got all these classes. And what we want to do is um, have a class that is, its sole purpose is to create other objects. And if you've been working on assignment two, you probably would have seen this. Um, actually, you know what? Let's let's go look at the assignment two code. Create this assignment. Change my mind about this one. Oh, freaking two factor. Um, six five four two nine. Okay. I just need to find it now. Mania. Entities. Here we go, entity factory. So this is a factory pattern. Um, and this entire class, class's entire job is to create other classes, to create other objects, I should say. Um, and you can see like there's other logic in it as well. Like it spawns spiders and it spawns zombies because there's all this like business logic, which is just part of the game associated with creating these entities. Um, but you can see there's a lot of like, there's a lot of kind of boilerplate type stuff where we retrieve configuration values. Um, this is probably like, I, I like this example better because it's a bit more realistic. Like the thing with a factory pattern is that you need a motivation for it. You need to say, well, I like, even just creating these entities is so much work that it's going to constitute its own class. Um, now, this is also a good example of when switch statements are not evil. Switch statements are your friend. They can also be your enemy. You want them to make them your friend, not your enemy. In this case, they're a uh, friend because um, what we have here is a switch statement says you read through the JSON and let's create certain types of entities based on what these strings are, right? And this is the only way you can do it. You can't, like, um, there, there's a thing about, oh, you know, this isn't close, open for extension and close modification because if you add a new entity, you have to go and change the class. And it's like, well, yeah. There's no way around it because you have to convert a string into an object in the trailer. Um, but you can see even here that like somewhere we just pass them to the user directly, and somewhere we have to more, you know, um, there's more complex functionality behind them. So we say, okay, we'll call this other function, which again is just a creational function, it's a factory. Um, more stuff here to do with you know different potions and stuff, but um why what, what what one of the sort of things that the factory pattern is trying to help us do is move away from this idea like what we, we just saw now with the um the composite uh, pattern is we have all this like new this new this new this um and there's this idea has anyone heard of the mechanical turf before um can you buy one no, no, like this, this thing, the mechanical Turk. So the mechanical Turk was this um, robot chess player in the 18th century. In the 18th century. So what, what this guy did, I don't know, what was his name? Yeah, you've spoiled it. Shush. <laughs> um, who is it? Who came up with it? Here you go. Wolfgang von Kemplin, because um, you know everyone everyone loved playing chess in that that time, um, and so what this guy did was I'm going to build a robot chess player so that you can you know like when you play the computer in chess these days, except it's going to actually sit there and mechanically go <laughs> and stuff, um, and obviously I'm sure there are robots that can play chess today, but you know that, that wasn't a thing back in the 18th century, and so. You know, they had this. Oops, sorry. 
they had this setup where you know you've got the cat board and you've got the internal mechanics. And what you can do is uh, fit a dwarf inside the inside the box. And so they're actually controlling the jet train. So going back to um, but here's the problem, right? Let's say I have an object like this. I'm going to call it mechanical turk. <laughs> I'm going to go new mechanical turk. I'm going to pass in you know, some pogs. Uh, you can get new yeah, exactly. Inside. Inside. Pass in some pog, pass in some, you know, gears. And oh, we're going to pass in a dwarf, by the way. Um, remember, this should be a black box, right? You shouldn't know how the internal mechanics of the mechanical work works if you're just playing it. But as a user, as a user of this object, the new black box, if I see new mechanical turf, well, I need some cogs and some gears and a dwarf, I think, hmm, I wonder how this works on the inside. Does this make sense, people? So we kind of break abstraction just by creating the object. So what the factory pattern tries to do is remove some of that complexity by saying, well, let's have a class that does a lot of um, this overhead for us. So instead of you know doing all this stuff where we, I mean, this is more, again, more sort of spawning logic, but like, here's a good one. Um, instead of passing in the configuration values into the constructor of the file, we say, well, here's a method which does it for me. So all I need to do is the position. I don't have all this extra crap like that was going to happen. Again, internal mechanics about how the spider works to create the object. Um, we got five minutes. We can. Um, I feel like I'm going to I'm going to look through the assignment two spec and see if there's anything worth talking about um, refactoring. Observer pattern of uh, open closed. I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away. Is the only thing. Um, we could. Oh, I don't want to chill. Yeah. About something five minutes. I'll try and look at. Let's look at some other um, creational stuff. Game builder. Um, probably the only other thing I'll say is like to do with creation patterns generally is like there's a lot of there, there can be a lot of um abstractions if you use just to do things like where you put pieces together and configure stuff. So like here, um this is all just like initialization stuff where you load the config, load the dungeon. Um, these are all just calling local methods, but build the map, build the goals. Again, this is all kind of construction and creation. And so rather than doing this in like a controller, for example, you might have, you know, you can't find for example, but um, some, some groups in sort of previous iterations of the project, you'd see a lot of setup code in the beginning because they're still sort of creating games. Um, and what we do here is we extract it, we put it inside a creation um, a creation class, and that is going to create more objects or this text is going to be working. Cool. Uh, any, any questions about this? Yeah. Um, I understand is multiple data that I can type in. Great question. Um, it's actually, you have, you have, you actually have, you actually have all day to do the exam. You roll up at 6 a.m. and you leave at 9 p.m. And we just walk in our room for my hours. Um, yeah, you can see me. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, the reason all day is because it's in person. So, we have to have two things. Um, I don't, sorry. Sorry, I don't know. Um, the problem is like, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's probably the other category for like class. 
So like when you say we're going to wait for the graphic, you'll probably be I don't know. Um basically you'll you'll be very clear like which time of day you're doing it in and there's this is how you set the sentence so it's like if you're in the afternoon setting you can't like you know there's lunch break right you can't just like walk through your lunch break so you will come in at like 11 30 and you have to sit in the park and it's like two hours until you're in game <laughs> so that you can't talk for anyone wait is that real yeah that, that's how it oh. works well, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm as new to this as all of you are, so the big learning for everyone. But um, we'll, we'll be very clear. Yeah, it's on the, it's on the Friday, um, and you do it either in the morning or the afternoon. Yeah, that's what we want. I think my, my understanding is that. The central exam equals phase. We use when your morning slot starts, here's when your afternoon slot starts. We'll avoid stuff like that. But it was just one person as well. Yes. Yeah, so you have to like, like so yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's things like that where people have exams in the morning and stuff where you just like often stay in the afternoon session. Um online um, <laughs> 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 you have to do your online exam on the bus. Um, the short answer is I don't immediately know this. There's lots of like cases that you know, figure out what um, Yeah. We haven't given you the whole lot of guidance from the yet, but I'm sure there'll be more stuff coming through. And every course is having the same thing of after you know. Two, two, three years of, in, of online exams, but finally going back to the session. So, um, hopefully, we just jump the group. Yes, 2nd of December, don't schedule your dates or your job interviews or your whatever for that day because we're all coming to campus and we're doing some coding in Java together. 300 people all coding Java at the same time. Wait, where is it? Is it at the base tour? No, we can. Like, 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 yeah, it's a. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> All right, I'll stop recording. Um, <laughs>